actually, this is a really, I would love your thoughts on this, but like, because these requests are really asynchronous, um, I can, I really feel like I always have two options. I can either create a bunch of default states that are not really truly valid. They really would mean like pending, uh, or I can set things as optional, which really does kind of mean pending to me, and then run everything asynchronous and let it come back and tell me when I'm when it's ready, which is what I've chosen to do here by running a detached task uh, upon the initialization uh, and letting the offerings be optional. But that's the problem here, because then you would have, there is an edge case here where this takes too long and someone asks for the purchases before it's ready and then you crash the app. Well, but they wouldn't have access to any auto renewables until the offerings are done coming back. You can't purchase an auto renewable unless you have access to it. Let's see. Well, but this is just a model, right? Yeah, I can just create it. Maybe it's stored. Maybe in the future we will store it in a true in a Good database. Point. Yeah. And then that's true. Maybe it's true right now that you can only have an auto-renewable, but since you can create it and store it in the file system or in core right. data, it may be the right. case that in the future you will run into trouble. True. Because ideally you shouldn't do work in the initializer because of that. Okay. After initialization, you want your object to be ready to be used. Can you make the initializer async? <laughs> you can, actually, uh, but that creates a new problem, which is the fact that they suggest that you create these stores immediately, right? Upon a lap launch so that you don't miss any events from the transactions history. And so if you want to create it immediately, how do you do that if it's asynchronous? Um, yeah. They only provide an asynchronous initializer? Uh, what do you mean they, no, this is, that's my own object. I was telling myself that like, uh, it doesn't make sense to have an uh, optional state. Um, like I can only have the source. So I basically decided to move my asynchronous uh, initialization to this in-app store, let that be asynchronous and, and uh, then, you know, handled that inside the store. But I, you know, this might not be the best solution. I'm a hundred percent open to suggestions here. Yeah. I really recommend you don't do all this work in the initializer, okay. especially async work. Okay. Unless you are willing to go async all the way, right? Right. All the way Which, to the How root. would you do that? If you went all the way to the root. So if we go up to the app, the demo store app.swift, you know, this is, this was my, you know, quick and dirty here is I just basically made a state object that has a store and then that's it. I just, you know, it's right there. It's initialized right there in the in the app object. But if you were going to try to go async all the way, how would we go about doing that? If it's not possible, then it cannot be done, right? Okay. If the framework doesn't allow you to do. Right. One way would, to, would be to show uh, like a loading <laughs> spinner until it's ready, right? And then you replace right. the UI. That's one way, right. but maybe it's not great to user experience, right? You don't want that. So what I recommend you to do is don't do it in the initializer. Okay. But you can do it like as early as possible. Like you create your objects and as early as possible, you start the, the request. It doesn't need to be in the initializer, right? But as soon as you initialize it, then you call the method to start preparing the object. So because there's going to, no matter what you do, there's going to be a point when you're waiting for it. Do we put that waiting period in the app itself, like at the very top level of the app, the composition root kind of thing, or do we, uh, you know, delegate that down somewhere else and have default values until that returns? I think you can do, for example, like on a peer, you execute it. Mm -hmm. This is one way. If you're using the app delegate, scene delegate, you can do it even before it appears, right? You can start. Right. Um, but as soon as you load, at some point, you will right. start loading, right? Yeah. So then that would require that basically we would 
build stuff with or have default values, which, you know, these optionals still work. It would still be optional. You just... Because uh, there's another problem here. This is a trial wait. Initially. What if it fails right. to create right. this store? Right. Right, yeah, we need to handle the error it. case and like, then there must be an, a state when this fails, right? If it can fail, there must be a state that tells you that it failed. Absolutely. And you either retry or you show an error to the user, you need to log in again and retry. You know. right. No, definitely. It looks like there's a there's some states they're not handled correctly here. Hundred percent, there definitely are. Uh, this was unfortunately not test driven at all, which it should have been. Right. So let's see. Ideally, you should create the objects asynchronously and yep. call methods to fire requests and so on. To get them started. OK, yeah. that's pre preferable. That's good to know. OK. And maybe this store is the view model you're talking about. It looks more like a view model. Right. I mean, it's an observable object with a published property, right? Like, <laughs> kind of exactly what it is. Yeah, the, the view will consume, <laughs> right? It will provide the data yeah. to yeah. the view. That's true. I see the store, like, it's a common name now. Even in WWC yeah. sessions, That's they, they call, they call it, it like literally stores rather than view models. Yes. But yeah. they are very similar, even the same concept, you know? Yeah. It's a model that exposes observable properties the right. change over time. So yeah. it's a model serving the view. Yeah. Right? So a view model. <laughs> <laughs> okay.